Hansa, the arrogant, cruel king of Mathura, was petrified of his end at the hands of his angel of death, little Krishna, the legendary warrior of Vrindavan. I shall search the length and breadth of this world and find you. He kept sending his ferocious demons one after another in order to kill Krishna. Uh, this can't be the right way. It is the right way. You, go into the cave. But this is where the fire demon dwells. Surely he'll devour me. Go oh. into the cave or I'll throw you in. <laughs> So disturb my slumber shall sleep forever. <laughs> I will lure you out of your oven this time, foolish fire demon. Time demon. Indeed, I have Prilam Masura, but next time I'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> what brings you to this scorched world, my old friend? Orders from Kamsa. We are to destroy the Angel of Death before he can destroy Master Kamsa. Hmm. I've heard of the boy's magic. If we work together, surely one of us will find him and kill him. We cannot be sure which child is the one. <laughs> so we just have to kill them all. That should be an easy task. The forests are like a tinderbox from the summer heat. Mm, I'll burn them down and flush out the children that play amidst their shade. And our angel will soon be ashes. <laughs> Present your torches. <laughs> Your music is so sweet and melodious, Krishna. Even the trees seem happy to hear it. They may be. But not as happy as I am to see that. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, my brother. I'm thinking what I always think, Balaram. How to fill my tummy with the bliss of our gopi's milk. And this time, I'm ready for them. Madhu, Subala, we have royal duties huh? to do. Royal, royal duties? duties? Yes. Isn't it? <laughs> That's not the way to keep it from falling, Vishaka. Look how well Radha is balancing her pot. Oh, Radha is the queen of Vrindavan. She gets everything right. We'd better catch up to the others before... <gasps> Stop! What are you smuggling in those treasure pots of yours? We're carrying the same thing we 
carried yesterday when you stopped us. And the day before. And the day before that. Aha! I knew you were smuggling golden treasure. It's not treasure. It's just butter. <gasps> butter? Oh, you must pay a hefty tax on that to my stomach. Uh, I mean to my king. Mm? We've told you a hundred times. We are not paying any tax. We can see right through those fake costumes of yours. We know who you really are. Then you know who I am. The king's most feared tax collector. And if I don't get my share, I mean the king's share, I can be very dangerous. <laughs> well, Mr. Tax Collector, sir, you may tell your king that we only pay taxes to our queen. <laughs> queen Radha! But, but, but she's no queen. Just look at how she's dressed. Like, like a milkmaid. Hmm, indeed. She carries a pot of milk on her head instead of a crown. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a monkey on yours. <laughs> He's king of the monkeys. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, um, we will return for the taxes later. <laughs> uh, the king requires our immediate attention. <laughs> Was he trying to collect taxes from you again? That boy will never give up his pranks. As if anyone would believe he's a tax collector. <laughs> Everyone knows he's our darling little Krishna. Sudha, he will never stop his mischief if we pamper him every time he steals our milk and butter. We must teach him a good lesson. But not too harsh, I hope. Don't worry. When we are through with Krishna, he will never bother you with his tax collecting again. Well, where's my share of the taxes, brother? There's nothing to share. We'll starve at the rate those girls pay their taxes. But at least we won't starve for music. Play for us, Krishna. Ah, your music is as satisfying to the ear as butter is to my belly. Almost as satisfying. Krishna's beautiful music gives us more energy than mere food. Come, let's use our newfound strength and have a tug of war. <laughs> <laughs> Grab hold, Krishna. <laughs> the losers will carry the winners on their shoulders to the river and back. is at hand. There is the angel of death. How heartwarming. <laughs> I shall enjoy licking his flesh with my flames. <laughs> no, if you approach them now, they may run away. Let me lead them deep into the forest. Then you can carry out Kamsa's orders and set the trees ablaze. One way or the other, they will not escape alive. A blazingly brilliant scheme, Pralambasura. To the forest! Hurry! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have fun playing with them. Um, I can't play anymore, Balaram. Something desperately urgent has come up. <coughs> what is it, brother? There are taxes to collect. But what about the tug of war? Ugh, the teams are uneven without you. Ugh. You, come here. Yes, you. Hurry. What's your name? Pralam... 
Pragosh. Well, Pragosh, it's good of you to come join us. My friends need your help. But, uh, I'll be back soon with milk and butter for the winners! I just have to bring these boys into the forest first, and then the Angel of Death will follow. Girls are alone this time. I hope you're hungry, Daddy, because today they're going to pay a very heavy tax. That's far enough. this time. Now you will pay your taxes or face the wrath of the king's personal guard. Call him off! We will pay the taxes! Guard! A very wise choice indeed. Now hand it over. The King of Vrindavan will be pleased. Very pleased. Well, Sir Tax Collector, you got your share this time. <laughs> now, we are going to get our share and tell your mother Yashoda that you've been extorting milk and butter from these poor girls. Won't she be surprised to learn her darling Krishna has given up cow herding and is now the king's personal tax collector? <laughs> no, please don't tell her. She will be very angry. As she should be. Please let me go. I promise I'll never dress up as a tax collector again. No, you won't. Because we're going to teach you how to dress up properly when carrying milk and butter. <laughs> Aren't we, Chandrika? <laughs> yes, we are indeed. We're almost there! Just a little more! Come on then, carry us to the river! Well, don't just stand there looking like a loser. Bend down and carry me to the river. I bend for no one except for the great Balaram. I shall carry you, but not to the river. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> You're slow as an elephant. Faster! looks like a proper milkmaid. <laughs> if only Yashoda could see him now. <laughs> oh, please, no! But you look so beautiful. <laughs> Yashoda is lucky to have such an angelic daughter. <laughs> Maybe my son Subala will marry you. Then you will be my daughter too. <laughs> please, let me go. I promise I'll never dress up as a tax collector again. You certainly won't, but you will pay one. <laughs> Are you satisfied? Now that I've paid your tax of shame and embarrassment, will you please let me go? Hmm, not before you dance for us. Go on, Daddy, play. <laughs> Dance, Krishna, dance. Come on, Krishna, dance. Stop, stop, stop. I think you've lost your way. 
No, Balram. I know exactly where I am. Prakash! What on earth are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, you've come to kill me, huh? And your friends as well. The fire demon will be roasting them any minute now. Is that so? Well, we shall see who will go to the land of the dead. Indeed we shall. <laughs> ah! Ah! Why are you stopping? Uh -huh -huh. You're not done paying your tax yet. Krishna! Don't you hear it? Help us! <gasps> Look! My dear mothers, your sons are in the forest and they are calling out for my help. I must go. Kumala! <laughs> Looking for me? You are as slow as you are ugly. But I will fix that. That's much better. Lakshmi! Where are the cows? They wandered into the forest in search of greener grass. We never should have left them and gone off to play. Or to collect taxes. For my call. <gasps> Mama, you're okay. My little Tulsi. <laughs> you're safe now, Sundari. <laughs> this should trip up his plans. face will scare away all the forest animals. <laughs> that will be the last time you joke with the mighty Pralambhasura. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> now I shall squeeze the life out of you like a bug. <laughs> Pralambasura is killing your brother this very moment. And I shall devour you with flames and rid my master Kamsa of his curse of death. Oh, Krishna, please save us. Don't be afraid. No harm will come to you as long as I'm with you. Now, all of you, just lie back on the grass, close your eyes, and imagine a cool summer breeze blowing over you. What's the matter? Don't want your friends to see the great hero burned alive? <laughs> oh, it's not that I'm concerned about. It's just that I didn't want them to see the horrible fate I have in store for you. <laughs> so You'll be dead. Kamsa will be pleased. But you're mistaken. Kamsa will be very disappointed when he finds out you are the one who's... Nap time.
game's over. <gasps> the fire. It's gone. Yay! Christmas <laughs> <Yay! laughs> saved us and the cows too. Thank you. Thank but you. what about Balram? <laughs> the fire demon said the other one was killing him. <laughs> Don't be fooled by that old windbag. Everything he said was just a bunch of hot air. That horrible noise! It's giving me a headache! Pour me some nectar. I am sorry, my lord, but Pralambasura is dead. Mm. Dead? Yes, my lord. We cannot be sure, but we think he may have been killed by your angel of death. <sighs> the prophecy is true. He'll kill me next if I don't kill him first. There must be someone who can destroy that child before he destroys me! <laughs> if I may uh, suggest, my lord, Aristasura the bull is a fearsome demon. I will never forget when he uprooted mountains with his horns and threw them in the air. Yes, he was a deadly bull. If anyone can kill my angel of death, it is Aristasura. Order him to come at once! Hurry! Yes, my lord! Shaka, or we won't finish in time for the festival. <laughs> Radha, what are you doing? Picking flowers for Surya Puja. Picking flowers without my permission is what you are doing. <laughs> we don't need your permission. Ah. Did you see that? This thief is ruining my flowers. Who made you king of the forest? You've never sown a single seed or watered a single plant. You are the one who's ruining the Kusumavana with your cows and wild friends. Oh? Uh, 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 <laughs> and who are you to defame a pious, righteous person such as me? The pious and righteous Krishna killed a woman right after his birth. Bhutna was a wicked witch who came to kill Krishna. Not only that, he lied to his mother and stole butter from the houses of the neighboring gopis. Mm, yes, and it was delicious too. And when he became a little older, he went so far as to steal the clothes of the young gopi girls. <laughs> you want. That is the extent of Krishna's pious saintly conduct. So says you. But I am getting yourself deeper into trouble with every word. I can see my divine righteousness is not appreciated here. Let's go find some better grazing. Frightened child cannot be the one I am looking for. Oh, Komala, where is my little angel? Each day I count every beat of my heart as I wait for his return. I know how you feel, Yashoda. I too anxiously await his return to hear what miraculous feats Krishna has performed today. Miraculous feats? I shall lay in wait for this one called Krishna. Lalita! Vishaka! I found the most beautiful flower! 
stars. If only I could reach them. <clears throat> What's that jingling? <clears throat> Probably just a cowbell. Go back to sleep. That's no cowbell. <clears throat> what is it? What are you going to do? Pay back Radha for her insolence. We need more flowers, Radha. <clears throat> Don't be in such a hurry. I'll get them. There's so much lower now. Hmm. The gods must be looking down on me. <laughs> The flower thieves are back. We must guard these trees day and night, boys. Let go, Radha. We'll catch you. None of those are the ones. But if Kamsa's angel of death is as miraculous as they say, surely he will return quickly if I threaten his village. <coughs> Already taken their cows home, Krishna. Mother Yashoda will be worried if you don't return soon. I will guard my flowers all night if I have to. Oh, why are you so stubborn, Krishna? We needed those garlands for the Surya Puja. That is not my problem. These flowers are for Lord Vishnu now. <laughs> what was that? It sounded like a <gasps> demon. <laughs> yes, Krishna. Come save your cherished Vrindavan. <laughs> Don't go, Krishna. It's a trap. It may be, but I can't ignore the cries of Vrindavan's people. Krishna! I think you've insulted him. Madhu! No towering demon, 
are the lowest of creatures. Why do you frighten the good people of Vrindavan? If you have come to challenge me, then fight me like a demon, not a worm. Krishna! Run! eaten enough sweets to fill a demon's belly. Oh, I need to lay down. Uh, um, and I need more ratus. <laughs> <laughs> well, little brother, today you have surely added to your list of great miracles. You mean added to his list of sins, don't you? Now the pious and righteous Krishna has killed a bull as well. He was not a bull, but a terrible demon, disguised as a bull. Oh, Krishna, that may be true. Still, he was a male cow. And you must atone for your sin. Hmm, very well. I shall bathe in the Yamuna, tomorrow. Ha! Huh. That's not enough. Lalita is right. To atone for such a grave sin. You must purify yourself by bathing in every holy river in the world. I... I... I've got a great idea. Why wander throughout the world when I can bring all the holy rivers here and take my bath in them? Oh, Krishna, stop dreaming. Am I? Just watch. of Himavan, King of the Mountains. I am Kaveri, granted the form of a river by Lord Brahma himself.
I am Godavari. My water is sweet, like you, dear Krishna. I am Saraswati, and always connected with the Vedas, saints, and Lord Vishnu. I am Narmada, and I have come from the body of Lord Shiva. And I am your favorite, Yamuna, daughter of Surya, the sun god. I will be cleansed simply by your touch. Please, enter my waters. It will be my pleasure. This pond shall be called Shyama Kund. Its holy waters are so refreshing. Now I have become pure from bathing in my Shyama Kund. But you three have become contaminated from siding with the demon, Arishtasura. Come, bathe away your sins in my pond. No, the water in your pond is soiled by your sin. We shall make our own pond. Yes, right here, where Arishtasura dug his hoof into the earth. <laughs> Crater, Radha. But where is your holy water? Hmm. It will come. If you're waiting for the rain, I'm sorry to report. There isn't a cloud in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you won't accept some of my contaminated water? No, thank you. We'll bring pure water from the Mansi Ganga. They could use my help, Balaram. Surely no one else could fill their needs, dear brother. Oh! It's no use. It will take a lifetime to fill this pond. Oh, Radha. I see you're fatigued and distraught. Please accept our service and allow us to fill your pond with our holy waters. Yes, thank you. There is no other way. Krishna, I shall bathe and play with my friends here every day. <laughs> Kalambasur's and Arishtasur's death created further panic for terrified Kansa. Other demons have tried and paid with their lives. What makes you think that you can succeed where they have failed? Because I am Kashi and the earth trembles beneath me. <laughs> I will find your angel of death, King Kamsa, and crush him beneath my hooves. With 
these pearl ornaments, we'll be the most beautiful gopis at the Deepavali festival. They will surely make us shine as bright as the festival's lights. <laughs> Those poor girls cannot even look at me. It's your magnificent good looks, dear brother. It blinds them. More likely, they don't want me to see that they are making ornaments to adorn themselves for the Festival of Lights. Let's see if they are willing to share their decorations. <clears throat> Please excuse my intrusion, dear gopis. I couldn't help but notice what beautiful ornaments you are making. My friends and I would like to celebrate the Bavali as well. And I was hoping you might spare a few of your pearls so that they can look as fine as you. <laughs> I didn't know Subala and Madhu cared so much about their looks. Oh, I didn't mean them. I meant Hamsi and Harini. <laughs> Dear friends, are you so vain and proud that you cannot even hear my humble pleas to share your ornaments with these noble cows? <laughs> You're too humble, Krishna. These pearls are fit for kings and queens. Why ask for only enough for two of your cows? Why not ask us to decorate your entire herd? <laughs> I do not require all your pearls, Lalita. Just enough to decorate the four horns of my two favorite cows. I'm so sorry, Krishna. But I do not see even one pearl good enough for your cows. <laughs> Clever gods. Forget it. I'll find my own pearls. Hmm. Didn't feel like sharing, huh? They have no respect for cows or me. But they will when I'm done with them. Oh, yes, they will. Pearl plants? <laughs> That's the silliest thing you've ever dreamed up, Krishna. Trust me, Mother. If you give me your pearls, I will plant them in the field and grow so many I can decorate all of our cows for the Pavali. <laughs> oh, my dear son. Pearls don't sprout like fruit. They come from oysters in the distant ocean. Please, Mother, you must give them to me. I promise they will sprout in three days and you'll have more pearls than you can ever imagine. I simply cannot uh, ever say no to my darling Krishna. Thank you, Mother. Thank you. we were planting cool, sweet yogurt instead of pearls. Don't be ridiculous, Madhu. Yogurt doesn't grow on trees. It grows on your belly. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard the news, Radha? Everyone is talking about Vrindavan's newest farmer. I heard he's planting pearls. Would you plant my bangles, Krishna? And grow me a new pair? <laughs> <laughs> when magnificent pearls begin popping up all over my field, we'll see who's teasing whom. Uh, you don't suppose we could plant lettuce, do you? No, Madhu. But you've given me an idea. Here's what I want you and Subala to do. See you guys, Radha. See you. And go Girls, wait. If you want more pearls to plant, I'm afraid we're fresh out. Oh, we have plenty of pearls. But uh, Krishna asked if you could be so kind as to give us some of your delicious milk. He must be very thirsty from all his farm work. It's not that. He wants the milk to water his pearl plants. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid our milk is not good enough for such a noble purpose. Vishaka is right. Krishna's sacred pearls require something better, like 
Cactus milk? <laughs> On his head, yellow dhoti, ah! and he played fruit. But you're not being fair, Krishna. Your pearl plants aren't the only ones who need milk to grow. You can have all the milk you want, Madhu. Just as soon as the pearls are as plump as you. Krishna, look! They're sprouting! They're sprouting! are drunk with their aroma. Ah, what is that delightful smell? Your pearls, mother. They're sprouting. They're sprouting all right, but not pearls. Thorns. <laughs> Krishna, look. A pearl. They're bigger and more beautiful than the ones we planted. Krishna's tricks. They must be fake. This is the finest pearl I've ever seen. Just as I feared. The quality of Krishna's pearls puts the best of ours to shame. Maybe if we beg him, he will share some of his with us. After the way we treated him? The only thing he'll share with us is his ridicule. We'll be the laughing stock of the Deepavali festival. No, we won't. We saw Krishna grow his pearls. It's easy. We'll just plant our own field. Yes. Our pearls will be twice as beautiful as his. Have you all gone mad? Just because Krishna made it look easy, you think you can do it? He lifted Govardhan Hill. Can we? Growing pearls is impossible, even for demigods. Krishna accomplishes such miracles all the time. Have you ever performed even a single miracle? Growing pearls is not a miracle. It wasn't Krishna's magic. It was the mystic potency of Vrindavan soil. Yes, the soil of Vrindavan is transcendental, as is the water of the Yamuna. We'll plant our pearls and water them not just with milk, but with butter and ghee as well. Then, ours will be even bigger and more beautiful than Krishna's. Come, wait. Why use these inferior pearls when our mother's pearls are so much bigger? Yes! The bigger the seeds, the better the fruit. Vishaka! Radha! I promise, Mother, you will get ten times the pearls in return. Are you girls sure of what yes, you're doing? Yes, Mother. As sure as we are of the sunrise. for days. The only thing they're growing is weeds. But with all that butter and ghee they're pouring out, they will be very tasty weeds. <laughs> oh. oh, this is a disaster. You want them to grow pearls? No! I want them to stop wasting that delicious butter and ghee. 
Krishna, my dear friend, could you loan me your yellow dhoti, flute and peacock feather? Oh, you're a clever one, Madhu. I think the girls might just share some of their butter and ghee with a tired, humble pearl farmer. <laughs> Who's there? Krishna, if you've come to bargain for our superior pearls, you're wasting your time. I'm too ashamed to show my face. It is obvious you are better pearl farmers than I. If only you'd share a little of your yummy butter and ghee, I might be able to make my inferior pearls grow half as big and beautiful as yours will surely be. Now that you've come to your senses and humbled yourself to us, I suppose we could spare you a little. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Oh. Gopikas, come here. Have you noticed that our pearl plants look different than Krishna's? Oh! Lalita's right. Our field has produced nothing but thorn bushes. Shh! We mustn't let anyone find out, especially our mothers. Congratulations! <laughs> I hear you had a prosperous harvest. And who told you? A little birdie with a thorn stuck in his foot. <laughs> <laughs> Come, my friends. We must decorate our cows for the festival. Mothers will be very upset when they find out we've lost their balls. I tried to warn you, but you wouldn't listen to me. It was Krishna. What do you mean, Mishaka? He was in the reeds, remember? He and his friends probably uprooted our plants and replaced them with thorn bushes. <gasps> this time he has gone too far. I'm going to tell Mother Yashoda. Tell her what? That Krishna grew pearls so big and beautiful that you had to have some, so you gambled your mother's pearls and won thorns? <sighs> Lalita's right. Whether Krishna tricked us or we tricked ourselves, our situation is the same. We have no pearls. And if we don't find some, our mothers will never forgive us. But pearls are not easily acquired in Vrindavan. Where will we find some? We have no choice. We must humble ourselves and ask Krishna if he will sell us some of his pearls. Where is the boy? The boy in the yellow dhoti with a flute and peacock feather. I'm going to destroy him. <laughs> Much as I love butter and ghee, I don't think I can look at any for a month. At last I found you, our oh angel of death. Me? Uh, I'm no angel. No, you are surely not Kamsa's destroyer. For you will never get your chance to kill him once I crush you beneath my hooves. He's not the one you're after. <laughs> At least the other boy had some meat on him. <laughs> your death will be no challenge at all. 
Don't be afraid. Krishna, he's a demon. Keshi's no more dangerous than a child's rocking horse. You shall see how dangerous I am, you impudent brat! my friend. But you bravely lured him right to me with your clever disguise. I don't ever want to pretend to be you again, Krishna. No matter how much butter and ghee it might get me. A wise choice, Madhu. Very wise indeed. <laughs> Brother, it looks like it's been a bountiful harvest. Oh. Yes, what a pity the Gopika's harvest was not so successful. They must have all been eaten by pearl worms. <laughs> <laughs> we heard that Krishna is selling his surplus pearls, Subala, and have come to purchase the best ones. And with what do you plan to purchase them? Not milk and butter, I hope. Are you not the same gopis who denied my request for a few pearls to decorate my cows or share a few pails of milk for my pearl crop? I'd rather throw all my pearls in the Yamuna than give you a single one. But we can pay with gold. All the wealth in your homes, including the houses themselves, cannot purchase the least of my pearls. Why are you being so difficult with us, Krishna? Please, Krishna, we are willing to pay even more than your pearls are worth so that our mothers may have them. Your mothers? Well, that's different. I am, as you know, very soft-hearted when it comes to mothers. Aren't I, boys? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. yes. Krishna loves his mother. And us, us too. too. Your mothers shall have my very best pearls. Oh, oh, thank you, Krishna. Thank you, Krishna. You're too kind. Yes, I am. But don't thank me. Thank your sweet, loving mothers. <laughs> <laughs> Look! A demon! 
I've come for my breakfast and I like my meat. Well done. <laughs> If you don't want me to eat your cows, then I will eat you. Who dares to ruin my breakfast? I have not come to ruin your meal, Bakasura, but to improve it. And how do you plan to do that, King Kamsa? Now that you've scared off the cows. By offering you the tastiest morsel of flesh in all the world. My angel of death. Ha! Your angel of death? The one who has killed all of the demons you've sent to destroy him? You want me to be his next victim? What kind of evil joke is this? No joke, Bakasura. Destroy my angel of death and I will see that you are fed like a king for the rest of your life. Ah. <laughs> Destroy my angel of death, Bakasura. Then you shall feast. Uh, very well. I agree to your terms. Your angel shall be dead before day's end. All glory is to Kamsa's angel of death for saving our cows. Whoever you are, may the gods protect you. We've been walking so long. My feet feel like they're made of stone. Oh, if only there was a path across the lake. Our trip home to Vrindavan would be half as far. Ah, and so much cooler on our toes. Something struck me! Oh! Oh! Whoever you are, I demand you to stop this instant! Ah! No more! No more! Ah, stop! Ah! We are demons! Shooting jasmine flower balls! Ah! Oh! You cannot hit us behind this bush! Ah! Oh! <laughs> You're wrong, dear Radha. I cannot miss because I was Rama in my previous life. And everyone knows what a deadly bowman Rama was. You're a liar. What did you call me? She said you're a liar. You were never Rama. Rama was a brave warrior. But brave Krishna only picks on defenseless gopis. You don't believe me? But I did take the form of Rama. After training to become an expert bowman from the sage Vashishta, I later learned of the great challenge by Maharaj Janaka that whoever could draw back his mighty bow would win the hand of his beautiful daughter, Sita. Hmm? Oh, but whereas thousands of strong men fail to draw the bow, I drew it so powerfully that it snapped in two. Just like that. But after marrying Sita, my father ordered me to leave Ayodhya and roam the terrible forest of Dandaka. There, accompanied by Sita and my brother Lakshmana, I killed all manner of cruel and tyrannical demons. Then the demon Ravana kidnapped my dear Sita and slew my great devotee, Jatayu. I finally found Ravana in Lanka and with the help of the monkeys, destroyed him. And then I returned home to Ayodhya where I ruled as king. We all know the Ramayana, Krishna. And that you had no part in it. But it's true. I still roam the forests. But instead of carrying my great bow, I carry this little flute. And instead of making the three worlds tremble in fear with my arrows, I make the fauna and flora tremble in ecstasy with my sweet music. Mm, 
I don't think you've convinced them, my brother. Why should anyone believe Krishna's vivid imagination? Maybe if he showed some valor, like that of Lord Rama, we could take him more seriously. Now, if you could build a bridge across this lake to Vrindavan, like Lord Rama built to Lanka with his army of monkeys, then maybe we could believe you. <sighs> there you are, Krishna. And here is your army of monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> if a bridge is what you want, then you shall have one. Silly Daddy Loba. Coming, my dear little friends. Now I have a job for you to do. Build these gopis a bridge across the lake so they may carry their butter and ghee home to Vrindavan. Kamsa's angel of death is nearby. I can feel him. Ah, yes. Now, this one fits the description of Kamsa's dreaded enemy. And he will be my lunch when I fulfill my promise to Master Kamsa. has found Krishna. Hmm. Indra, shall I slay him with my fire spear? No, Agni Deva. Let us observe for a while longer. Surely cannot be doing all this magic. All of the stones around here must float. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not going to help me, at least stay out of the way.
great as Lord Rama. I still cannot believe you were Rama in a previous life. Indeed. You're as mischievous as a monkey yourself, Krishna. No wonder they follow your word. Hmm. Radha, Lalita, gather your pots and let's go home. Is that all the thanks I get for building you a bridge to Vrindavan? Uh, wait! You must at least pay a toll to cross the bridge. Like, um... Ah, that delicious butter you carry. Afraid? It's just a harmless bird. Krishna! Oh, Krishna! No! Get away! Krishna! No! Krishna! Oh, oh Krishna! Kamsa's Angel of Death is but the first tasty morsel of a great feast to come. What has that beast done? We must destroy that foul demon and try to save Krishna before it's too late. Aravata! Indra, how nice of you to drop by. To what do I owe the pleasure of a visit from the Devas? We do not bring you pleasure, Bakasura, but vengeance! <laughs> Power is no match for me, Indra. My Brahmadant will put an end to your evil. is done, Bakasura. Survive their weapons, Bakasura, but my fire will consume you. Surely he's dead now. That crazed demon must be immortal. All we can do is send prayers for Krishna's return. That's right, flee, cowards! No one can destroy Bakasura! No one!
Everything is all right, my friends. You can open your eyes now. Krishna? Oh, Krishna! You've been saved from the mouth of death! Hey! Krishna! Oh, Krishna! Krishna! Oh, Krishna! You're alive! 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 I'm fine. Really. There's nothing to get excited about. Come. Let's take the bridge home to Vrindavan. <laughs> Mother! Mother! You won't believe the amazing adventure we had today. Bakasura tried to kill Krishna. Say it isn't so. It's true. Bakasura took the form of a great heron. <laughs> His sharp beak was as long as a tall tree and hotter than fire. But he was no match for Krishna's incredible strength. We saw Krishna vanquish the demon with his bare hands. These hands, which are softer and cooler than lotus flowers? It cannot be so. You can see the dead demon for yourself, Mother Yashoda, on the shore of Setubandha. Krishna snapped his beak as easily as a child splits a blade of grass. Then he saved my dearest Madhu from being bird food. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Krishna. We left Mahavan to get away from the harassment of demons. Yet they still attack my little boy. There's no escaping them. Please, Krishna. From now on, just stay home. Don't go to the forest anymore. There are men who can tend the cows. All these stories about my heroic exploits are just lies. Isn't that so? Could be Lord Rama. And so, little Krishna, the legendary warrior, saved his beloved Vrindavan and his loving friends from the clasp of the fierce monsters and won the hearts of his admirers with his incessant, incredible heroic deeds. <laughs>